I'm still eating chicken. Yeah, well, you're always eating something. Are we live? We are live. We're going to wow. give it a minute. <laughs> I'm eating chicken. Okay. I'm, this isn't I'll... like... It's not like 3 p.m. and then, tele, you know, the televised news starts. This is the warm-up. So, welcome, everyone. Here we are, live from Detroit and from, where are you? Burbank, Los Angeles. I'm in Burbank, L.A., Los Angeles. And we oh. have, yeah, and we have, we're really excited. Um, we're going to wait for the audience to build up. We're going to tell you who we are. We're the table setters, Marvin and Matthew. We're the founders, the co-founders, and... We're really excited to share with you our official logo and, and tell you a little bit more about our mission. Hey, logo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we're going we're gonna to wait a minute while some of your uh, Facebook is building our audience. That's what it says, building the audience. Facebook is building our which means we'll have to repeat of something we just said. Yeah, we will. We will. We'll get it in a minute. Um, we repeat ourselves a lot. <laughs> So, <laughs> we're still spreading the word that you're live. This may take a minute. It's like, this is the new age of technical difficulties. No, it's just, uh, it's cool. Okay, we got a follower. We got someone watching. Hello, person, whoever you are. Um, hey, this is, this is, I'm Matthew. This is Marvin. Hi. We are coming to you live from the Detroit area and from the Los Angeles area to uh, announce our, our, our new organization called the Table Setters. Marvin and I have been doing this for years, um, but really formally in the last, last few years, where we really have decided that it's, we really got to get together in proactive ways and talk about difficult things, um, divisive issues, and... Um, and I'm getting all kinds of reminders right now. Hold up. Uh, all right. Marvin, take it for a minute. <laughs> so it's not just the logo we're launching, even though that's, that's an extremely important part. It's also uh, who we are, what we're about, and what we want to say, uh, not only to our friends on Facebook, but kind of the nation in general, and really spread the message of... Uh, I guess real love and understanding between different cultures, races, everything. Classes. So, um, uh, we also have uh, some descriptions of who we are to talk about. And uh, I'll start with maybe the short description. Like, we are diversity training. Uh, we, got, we feel like diversity training must move beyond Black History Month towards a culture integrated life we want to sit tables and workshops in churches schools and businesses uh, and I think what does that mean really uh, that means we want to affect the conversation you've been hearing that word a lot if you're paying attention especially in sports the conversation and the narrative of what it means to have a, a conversation about race in America mm -hmm. And while you're talking, uh, Lenita, happy birthday, Lenita, has joined. My sister and my mother has joined. My mother's just in another room right here. We're still staying Hi, here. Hi, Mom. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So, let's, without further ado, I think we're going to show the logo. I've got it right here. I got the logo. You got the logo? You want to do it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the logo up and put it over your face, maybe. I'm going to do a drum roll. <laughs> This is the logo designed by the, the talented Ann Burskins, and um, we're really excited. So here it is. Thank you, Ann. The Table Setters logo. If they can see it, I can't. Okay, but I know what it is. <laughs> da, 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 da. The Table Setters logo. So, um, Marvin, do you want to say a word about your thoughts on this logo? Yeah, so what we were thinking as Matthew and I talk about table setters, table setters, table setters all the time is really the question is who's at the table mm -hmm. and how can we all be at the table? Mm -hmm. So how do you do that creatively? Matthew constantly says, I'm not white. I'm really kind of pinkish mm -hmm. orange. And so we wanted variations of pink 
and brown all around the table. And one of them, uh, Ann did this, not me. I was talking to Ann about what to do and how it should look. And Ann came up with this amazing way to get everybody at the table. Mm -hmm. Not only at the table, but kind of shoulder to shoulder. And there isn't really a table in the center, but because of the way it looks, it looks like a table. Mm -hmm. And it says the table setters. And this is just like, amazing to me because we have pink dark brown uh uh light brown super light brown uh medium brown uh all the colors uh as i remember the analogy of one of our speakers once said hey my color is not in the crayon box the mm. flesh tone crayon box doesn't make up my color well every color that we really see in the world or in the united states at least is in this crayon box and everybody is joining the table and that's why i love the new logo <laughs> so I, I love it too um one of the prototypes we went through uh, these things take time to figure out one of these uh one of the things that we we had was like people there was a red yellow um black white blue green like a uh, sort of a rainbow and i i looked at it and i was like you know i the rainbow has been done a lot of times. There, it has all kinds of, uh, yeah, wonderful. We're, it's wonderful. And um, but it's been done, and and I, a lot of the table setters really like came to a new level of kind of understanding who we were in Marion, Illinois. Marvin and I were there in April just this year. Marianne, <laughs> What's up, Marion? What what? Uh, <laughs> kind of. Uh, Marvin will be back really soon. But we were in Marion, Illinois, and I, growing, living in Los Angeles for 17 years, I hadn't seen the buds at spring in a long, long time. And they're all the little, the little green buds. And it, it struck me, it was sort of psychedelic. We were driving into our first session, our first table setting. And I was like, Marvin, look, there's some reddish greens, there's some yellowish greens, there's some bluish greens. There's like a whole rainbow of greens. And it, it struck me that like, you know, we, we live in a world that's created with a lot of diversity. And the actual beauty of, of the way that God has created us uh, as people, there's just beautiful shades of brown with some reds and some, and some, you know, some beiges and some pinks and uh, just so many different shades that in our, in our own skin, we're beautiful as we are. So um, we really celebrate this. I love how they're supporting each other. I can see sort of a both a celebration and also possibly grieving like the 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 pain and and the uh and the joy it's all, i mean Anne has done such an amazing job of really hearing our hearts and our mission so we're going to read you the mission sort of our official statement that you can find on facebook you can go right now um uh and as i read it uh marvin's going to uh be posting the new logo on twitter uh, so you can see it there, and I will then, re Marvin will read some things, and I will post ours on Twitter. And then we'll take some questions. If you all have any questions, you can just type them, and we can answer them. So, um, as Marvin said, diversity training must move beyond Black History Month, right? Um, and so somebody recently said to me, uh, we got to have more than drive-by diversity trainings. I, I love it. <laughs> we got to have more than drive-by diversity trainings that happen every February. So, the table setters are founded through the deep friendship of Marvin Wadlow, an African-American baby boomer, and Matthew John Schmidt, a European-American generation Xer. And the table setters exist to remember that we are all invited to God's table through Christ, with none of us over-welcomed or under-welcomed. Both of us lament that though Jesus shares these stories and parables through setting a variety of tables across cultures and classes, most of our country, including Christians, in fact, Christians can sometimes be the most guilty of this, we have a hard time stepping outside of our own zip codes, outside of our own neighborhoods. And the table setters believe that reality is greater understood when we fully appreciate differences across the divisions of humankind. So we aim to start a movement of courageous and ongoing table setting. Individuals like us, individuals like yourselves, businesses and congregations who are willing to continually meet with whoever they consider the other. We are called to mutually learn, question, and share experiences in vulnerable storytelling that ultimately moves us towards making better decisions together. Marvin, take it. Yeah, I also want to say that uh, we're coming from this foundation of believers in Jesus, but we are able to speak in secular and non-secular uh, communities and have 
spoken in those communities. University of Georgia, PhD level classes, Azusa Pacific, uh, uh, master's uh, classes. And so we're ready to have the conversation uh, regardless of who's at the table. And our mission is, uh, the Table Sitters is a faith-based organization that produces improved relationships across humanly uh, created racial, social, economic, political, and religious lines. Uh, we combine launch events in churches, schools, and civic institutions with customized plans for ongoing cultural accountability. Uh, let's break that down just a little. Like, we want to help you come up with a plan to have conversations at the table, okay? Uh, and we want to facilitate that, not to instruct you as to locally what's going on in your area, because we don't know but we can facilitate that agenda. Um, diversity training days are never enough. Ongoing relationships that nurture connections and share brokenness, hopes and dreams can be mutually healing and productive. We believe that racial alliances forged through respect, trust and accountability are close to the heart of Christ as referenced in Romans 14 and Matthew 18, especially the context of a meal. Uh, we will listen to the needs of your particular community and develop a format for both the initial launch workshops as well as schedule repeated table settings to nurture diverse relationships for the long haul. We believe food, food uh, in several forms are needed, literal, physical food, but then the food of having conversation and exchanging that meal is also important, mm -hmm. but we feel the first step is food, henceforth, uh, the table sitters, uh, et cetera. Yeah, so, you know, I think, thanks Marvin, and um, basically, you know, I also want to say that we are, we come at this from a, a Christian faith, and we are we are mostly uh, looking at the, the ways that there's so much in sacred text, both Christian and, and Jewish texts and, and the Quran, um, that go back to a sense of a table setting, relationship building is where it's all about, over meals. And so we can speak from our Christian background, but we also want you to understand that we can, we can broaden that, we can look outside that, we can, we can start there and move into other directions as, as requested and as needed. Um, Marvin and I are comfortable in all those kinds of, of, of settings. Um, and I just want to say that, that what we have experienced in our life is that, you know, diversity training turns to be this, like, just this one-day thing. And Marvin and I's friendship over the last 14 years, I mean, he, I love him, and he drives me, I kind of want to curse. I'm not going to curse. He drives me crazy sometimes, and I'm sure I drive him crazy. Or am I totally cool? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, you're totally cool. <laughs> None of your little idiosyncrasies drive me nuts at all. <laughs> But here we are, and, um, and I, I really love this man, and uh, I've learned a lot from him. And I think that what we, what we really want is, we think that diversity training will get us to that point. Well, it doesn't do that unless we really nurture it, because we always have a tendency, all of us, to go back into the things that make us most comfortable in times of stress. What's up, Mama Ames? And uh, so, yeah. so we know that you know we're, we're setting up workshops, but it also is, all right, so... What, for, what from there? We're right now developing curriculums and ongoing accountability plans where we want to expect all y'all that are supporting us to start trying to set these tables in yourselves, in your, in your own hometowns, in your own neighborhoods, in your own neighborhoods that are nearby yours that you might have not gone in. And we want you to share those stories and share, this, share these experiences. Um, and we want to build up a sense of like a story core of sorts, of of stories of people having brave moments outside of their context. And it's not always, it's definitely not all, always sunshine and roses. So we want to be able to come back to the table. I'll step into the non-sunshine and roses. Talk about it, Marvin. Talk about it. Not. I think if you're going to have rich relationships with people, uh, regardless kind of the context, uh, you have to come to the table. There will be discussions that won't be pretty. Uh, or as I say, you should be sitting with people at the table that don't look like you, sound like you, think like you, talk like you, act like you. And in that, there will be discourse. Mm -hmm. There will be issues. There will be cultural issues. There will be issues of food even. So 
you know, everybody bring a dish to the table mm-hmm. and share that dish. And that's just not a metaphor. That's actually bring a dish from your culture, but also have conversation about your culture. And then when you start to establish the friendship, you know, as Matthew and I have done over the last 14 years, we have gone toe to toe as if it was, uh, oh, who can I reference? Uh, McGregor in a UFC fight versus, uh, the other guy. Or the Muhammad defiant Ali ones, right? Versus, uh, <laughs> for, uh, I don't for... know if White got Muhammad Ali fought. <laughs> oh, I do. But anyway, anyway, you get my point. There will be drama. <laughs> You're over it. Come to the table. Have some food. We have. So, uh, we want to take some questions, but what I want to ask you to do is sort of a charge. Like, what you can do is, is, is send this video, share this video, um, ask people to check us out, ask people to consider inviting us to come. Marvin and I are also developing some programs where we can, we can possibly do a brief, a brief like, introductory session to what we do, um, uh, like, through college campuses, through different, like, video teleconferencing and things like that. So we're figuring out different ways to, uh, to get this, this work out there, to get this story, and really come to a table that is hope-filled, that I think we all are welcome to the table, and I think we all have something to learn from each other. I, I don't have more gifts at the table than Marvin does, and vice versa, and any of you, uh, but you also don't have nothing to offer. I think so many of us are often afraid to come to these discussions, and I think, actually, if we were talking about this more often we both agree with this, we could really see some, some real change of heart and change of minds and maybe some change of policies. Yeah, but it comes I down to a hard to thing first. Out, not only Ann Burskins, again, this is the logo launch. This is the logo launch. Show the logo. This is the logo. Yeah. What's That's up, Ray? Logo. Thanks, so, Ray. Uh, not only to Ann Burskins, but to Dan and Susie in Little Lake of Egypt. Shout out to them. Uh, shout out to the Ames family, the mm-hmm. sisters. Plus one, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, shout out to Pastor John. Uh, shout out to all the people in Marion, Marion, and other places that uh, that's become our really kind of hub and second home mm-hmm. in uh, Marion, Illinois. And we love that area. They really gave us uh, the confidence to. to to really do this, to be honest. And uh, shout out to Lanita specifically, uh, who we've been hanging out with for the last year and uh, initiated the conversation, the mm-hmm. real launch, the real emphasis. Mm-hmm. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to thank uh, Ray for helping us uh, get this up and running. And I also want to thank uh, Door, the Discovering Opportunities for Outreach and Reflection, for giving Marvin and I space to really to really explore these topics and explore this concept of, of systemic racism and systemic classism and all those things through all of the many workshops that we got to do. Um, but I also just ask that you would share this. Share this and help us get the word out. Um, we're gonna, we have some great events coming up, some great things coming down the pipes. We're going to be asking questions. We're going to be posting things on our Facebook page. Um, keep, keep up with us. And uh, if you can figure out a way to get us to your church and school, um, or your business, um, if you know the right person, uh, connect them to us. Make sure that they see our stuff. And we'll put more stuff up along the way. But I want to open it up to any questions. Go ahead and type any questions we can answer, any statements. Uh, take about another two minutes, would you say? Anita asked the question. She said, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the response should be, so I'm just doing a love song. <laughs> It's a pleasure yes. to work with you too, Ray. It is. Thank yeah, you, man. Yeah, thank you, Ray. One media marketing, I should say. One media marketing. <laughs> One media marketing, baby. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me when I tell you if you want things done, social media and just like excellent uh, uh, feedback and iron sharpening iron, like c- coming at us with, yeah, what about this, Marvin and Matthew? Then it's One Media Marketing and it's Ray. Uh, we love you and we really appreciate you. Uh, we're just, you know, trying to build that foundation so we're strong. Uh, and definitely this is, um, this is helpful. Um, oh, it's Mary on. Somebody said it's Mary on. Thank you. Sorry. Mary on. He was saying it right. And then he self-corrected wrong. Somebody said Mary on. And then somebody said Marion. And for those audience who don't know what I'm talking about, Illinois, there's a town six hours south of Chicago called, M-A-R-I-O-N, some pronounce it Mary on, 
I thought it was Marion, like you're the Marion type. So I'm pronouncing it Marion. Please correct me online. I would love that. I would love that. So, um, hey, also, mom, uh, my mother is on, and uh, I don't think you're colorblind. Um, I think that might not be a term that most people that are Asian actually appreciate. I, I'm I'm learning that, but um, but. Yeah, no, we, we wanted to get those actual those actual skin tones of all the different shades. Um, I'm not sure. I'm still learning about that. If anyone can offer us any uh, context as to the, the term yellow, I'm not sure that it is... Uh, I'm not sure it's usually appreciated by some of the folks that I know. But um, yes, we were trying to represent all of the different skin tones that we, uh, that we have seen. So we're trying to make it feel like it is actually the, the actual, everyone at the table. Um, comment that was made to Anne for her to come up with this logo is to say to her, look outside mm. in your world on a daily level and, and, and give me those colors that you see. Mm. And as I have lots of Asian friends, lots of Latino friends, lots of African American friends, and we come in all different shades and colors, and lots of Anglo white friends or pink friends, as Matthew, Ruby, and Charlotte, his daughters say, mm -hmm. Thank uh, you, Sean. I think it really, really represents that and that's what we were going for definitely the, the term colorblind um we're saying the color brave so this logo is color brave yeah and we need the conversations to be color cultural and brave uh and and i will say it um regardless of your stance on colin kaepernick uh i believe the bigger picture is he is asking for a conversation mm -hmm. and i love that and people are starting to join in with him to ask for a conversation. And even if you don't like the approach, uh, he is asking for a conversation. We are asking for a table setting conversation or come to the table and sit and let's begin those discussions uh, of, of breaking bread uh, physically uh, and metaphorically uh, in that way. Yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah. Cammy Church. I see Cammy Church. Thank you, Cammy. <laughs> uh, there's a little uh, thumbs up for you. Thank you, Cammy. We went on a big hike last week, and we had quite the table <laughs> setting. Let me tell you, we talked about everything under the sun. And Cammy's an amazing teacher, uh, and we're going to see what uh, what happens with him, where he goes, his passion, his teaching. He, uh, I think he's an amazing engineer, mathematician, if you will, and that that needs to be spread in different communities that don't look like Cammy. Hmm. Cammy is pink. <laughs> and, and we love him. Yeah, and and so so Mary, uh, yeah, people are hugging around the table. They're holding each other up. And and Marvin just brought up something too. We use the word table setting in a literal sense, and we use it in a in a figurative sense of coming together with people that might have come from a different background, different kind of family structure, different kind of um, socioeconomic background, different race, different religion different uh, orientation, sitting down at a table and having a discussion about the things that, that give, them, give them trouble with, with the other. So things that really, really disturb them or bother them, being able to have courageous uh, question and answer time where we're, we're respectful. We don't have to always agree. In fact, we probably won't agree. Marvin and I don't always agree. But a table setting to us is something where you actually step outside your comfort zone and you step outside uh, what your your usual place, um, and you're with folks that that look different than you, think differently than you, uh, sometimes smell different than you, sometimes uh, all that stuff. Eat different foods, have different kinds of tendencies with time, have different kinds of tendencies with um, with how they value family. Every culture values family, but everyone values it in a, in their own way. So we really want to share those stories, and we believe that if you share those stories at a table or you share those stories on a hike, or you share those stories in a coffee shop, you share those over time, not just once, but you really work on building relationships. That, that real change came, comes, comes in that way. So we ask you to share this. We are passionate about it. This is, this is the work that we are committing to. And um, we really, you can see we're, we're, we're grassroots. I'm literally, my hand's getting tired holding this up. We don't have like a van, we don't have like a Wheel of Fortune kind of setup where I can just like show it. We're here. Um, we're, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't plan that. But anyway, um, 
yeah, so please share this. Please spread the word that we're the table setters. Um, f we're the co-founders, Marvin Wadlow Jr. and Matthew Schmidt. We aren't the only table setters. We want to inspire a, uh, a generation. Um, and I'm not just talking like the millennials. I'm talking like a generation of time of people that are that will re-engage in this. This is the early church had a lot of table settings. They really did. Um, but we lose that sometimes because uh, we, we kind of get in these individualized things. And we want to kind of break that down and sit back together at a table and, and share what's great about this very, very diverse country we live in. So, yeah. Anything? Also, last word, Marvin? Uh, online, and you can share it online. We're going to post it. Uh, we're on Zoom. Shout out to Zoom, mm -hmm. uh, which lets us have meetings across the country face-to-face -face, as mm -hmm. Matthew's in Detroit. In Charlotte and Ruby's bedroom. That's Marvin's and face. I'm in uh, L.A., Burbank. Marvin, can you feel me? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're feeling me up. Thank you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm gonna do a, 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 a sad face for that. Don't don't. Yeah, get your hands off me. <laughs> We're doing a table sitting right now. Um, yeah, you can share this video of this live broadcast later on, and you will see our mission statements online. And you will see our new logo blasted across not only our personal pages, but our table server pages. And with direct contacts to who you can contact to have us come to your town. Mm -hmm. I want to also be brave here and say that uh, Dan and Susie uh, have been our hosts every time we come to Marion. And uh, I really appreciate them. And Dan stepped out on faith and is supporting us in a lot of ways. And some of those ways have been uh, financial. I boldly say that, and I boldly thank him for that. Uh, and the, you know, Wade Halva, pastor at First Presbyterian Church, Marion, and his wife and his children have been very, very supportive of this conversation. Mm -hmm. That's important to say because there are uh, financial needs of spreading the message. Yes, we do take honorariums. Yes, we do travel, but we feel this message is important. Mm -hmm. Matthew and I, for obviously our children, and I have three sons, and Matthew has two daughters, uh, and those are my kids for me, and my kids are Matthew's for him. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been that way for 14 years, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much all, all of Charlotte and Ruby's life. And, um, you know, Darcy, Matthew's wife, has been <laughs> the rock for us all in the sounding board, but we need this message spread so that we can go out and set these tables. Mm -hmm. And we're asking for your support yeah. for that. And we're gonna have things that uh, you can step out on faith and support us financially, not just by bringing us, but by also uh, contributing to us to places that won't necessarily be able to uh, give an honorarium and have us come. Mm. And I just boldly say that because uh, in a lot of ministries, uh, that takes precedent. That's not the precedent here. The precedent for us is spreading the message of table sitting and having conversations. Mm. And Lenita, we are working on websites, a website right now. So we're, we're still in that development phase, but we wanted to, we wanted to get our logo up and running and uh, that way we can start uh, building our identity with that. So, um, since Marvin started the thanks, I also, we need to thank First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood for giving us yeah. space to really set a lot of tables and, and, and start to grow. And, and through that, we have a relationship with Dwight Radcliffe at the Message Center in Torrance, California. And he is, what's up Dwight? And he has, uh, just taught us so much. I'm starting to get to know some really amazing churches out here in Detroit. Um, uh, some really great hospitality at Mac Avenue Community Church and Sonny Smith and the Detroit Church are really um, just teaching me a lot. Uh, we're, we went to Evangel, uh, the, the work of, of Chris Brooks, and, and just hearing the kind of, just the, the long-term community outreach that's going on in this city, even despite all its pain. CCDA. CCDA, yeah. So... We are now. certainly forgetting people because you started this improvisational thank yeah. you. Shout There's... out to the University of Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just spoke there, PhD level class. Yeah, Fuller, Fuller Seminary, of course. We've gotten to speak yeah. with them. Um, but anyway, so we don't want to, we, we want this to be um, 
thank thank you for all who've joined. We want this to be something that you're comfortable sharing and reposting because it's it's not too long. Uh, so we're gonna close off soon, but I'm just gonna just read our short description one more time. So we really believe that diversity training. Uh, first of all, I'll say what is beautiful about our country is that we are really diverse. What is problematic about our country is that that doesn't necessarily mean we really know each other. Um, so we believe diversity training has got to move beyond the one-offs of Black History Month every, you know, doing a diversity training session and checking it off the list every, every year. We got to move towards culturally integrated lives. And so we set table workshops in churches, schools, businesses, when we can in person and when needed over the internet and things, uh, social media. But we will be generating more content for, for you all. So spread the word. And we love you all. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the loves. Thanks for all the thumbs up and the I what, what? That's me. I'm just sending love <laughs> and thumbs up. Okay, so we're... <laughs> so like we're... It's like... <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thanks, Marvin. I'm glad you approve of my message. Uh, anyway. really fun. <laughs> table setters, this is our logo. Again, Ann Burskins. We come to the table. It's a beautiful thing. Hey, Ann. Yeah, Ann. And we will uh, we'll be... We'll stay, stay up with us on Facebook. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. That's crazy.